have turned my morning into dancing. You have removed my sackcloth again. Archbishop Dominica Bierman has traveled the world for over three decades proclaiming the gospel from Zion to the nations with miracles following. She exposes the false doctrines of replacement theology and preaches restoration to the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. I will proclaim to the nations your salvation. You'll soon return to Jerusalem. I will declare your holy name, Yeshua, and your love. You do not just get the impartation of anointing cheaply. The impartation of anointing, and especially a double portion of it, does not come cheaply. It comes only through a life of faithfulness. You know, many people want, oh, Archbishop, just impart what you have on you. I said, oh, really? Will you be able to carry it? Because you've got to have the character forged to be able to carry it. And the character that is forged is the character of faithfulness, commitment, dedication, devotion, faith, paying the price, dying to self. It's a character. That character can carry that anointing. And so Elisha was developing. He already had it, but he was developing it walking with Elijah. And he didn't covet a position for himself. What he wanted is to serve Elijah. So now we see here that we have the 12 disciples of Yeshua. Well, not the 12 anymore, right? How many were here when he ascended to heaven? 11! Because Judas had already betrayed him. So we have 11 with him. Maybe there were other disciples too, but we know the 11 were with him. He's been teaching them the kingdom. He's been downloading on them the kingdom. They didn't know it. They needed to be taught. They needed to be disciples. There was a new covenant. This was a new ball game. You see? And the last words that he says, the last question they asked, and the last words that he says are very pertinent for us today. In this portal, this is the last question. When will you restore the kingdom to Israel? Now, Yeshua didn't tell them, I will never restore the kingdom to Israel. Yeshua didn't tell them, well, you know, Israel has messed up too bad. I will not restore the kingdom to Israel. No, Yeshua simply answered this. He said, it is not for you to know. But that he said to the disciples 2,000 years ago. It is not for you to know about the timings and the seasons that Yahweh has under his divine control. In other words, do not worry about it now. Do not worry about the physical restoration of Israel. Worry only about the spiritual, not about the physical restoration of Israel. But that was 2,000 years ago before the state of Israel was reborn, before the exile in year 70 happened, when we were exiled out of here and Rome came in with General Titus and destroyed and raised the temple to the ground and raised Jerusalem to the ground, when Emperor Hadrian raises Jerusalem to the ground and changes the name to Elia Capitolina. That hadn't happened yet. They were still in the Jerusalem they knew. They still could see the temple that they knew. And they wanted now from the spiritual to go directly to the natural. Let's get the kingdom to Israel restored. Let's get David sitting on the throne. Let's get Israel like it was under Solomon expanded. Let's get everything rebuilt. I mean, the Messiah has come for goodness sake. If the Messiah has come, then Jerusalem must be rebuilt. But no. Yeshua said no, the timings and the season for that rebuilding are in the divine hands of Yahweh, are under his soul control. That's very profound. But he said, you will receive power from on high, not many days from now. And then you will be able to preach with power in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria and unto the end of the earth. So I'm saying today, the restoration of Israel starts on the Temple Mount and will end on the Temple Mount. 
It starts with the baptism in the Holy Spirit, first with the fire falling from heaven during King Solomon, the baptism of the Holy Spirit falling upon the apostles and the disciples of Yeshua. And then when Yeshua comes back and he establishes himself as the king of Israel and the king uh, the ruling the nations with the rod of iron sitting on the Temple Mount, it will culminate right there. Everything starts and ends on the Temple Mount. Power. Without power, we cannot preach. There's been so many people that have tried to do good works and they have even sacrificed their lives to be missionaries in many different places, shunning that which Yahweh gave on the Temple Mount here, shunning Shavuot, shunning the Torah and the Spirit, shunning the Word and shunning the Ruach, the Torah because it's done away with according to them. The Spirit, because it is for another dispensation. All of these things are the outcome of replacement theology. And therefore overthrowing and overturning replacement theology is the key for the salvation, the revival, the harvest and the salvation of the nations. And also the key actually for the return of the Messiah. Because it is as we function under the anointing of Shavuot, under the anointing of the Feast of Weeks, those 50 days between Passover and Shavuot, the Pentecost, but it's not the name, the name is Feast of Weeks and Shavuot. As we function under that anointing, as we function under the anointing of the Torah written in the heart and the Holy Spirit filling us with power, we will be able to walk in His glory and we will be able to show Israel the true Messiah, the Jewish Messiah. And then many eyes of Israelis are going to be open to the Jewish Messiah as well. I have a lot more to tell you on this portal. I know it's hot today, um, but we are going to uh, seal this time right here, hallelujah, with prayer. We are going to pray for the cleansing of the portal. We're going to cleanse for the cleansing of the portal and then we're going to worship. Israel, Israel. You have risen from the dead, from the ashes of the Shoah. Israel, Israel, you will live again in His power and in His land. Why do the nations rage against Yah's covenant? They make shoot plans afresh to wipe you off the map. Israel, Israel, you have risen from the dead, from the ashes of the Shoah. Israel, Israel, you will live again in your power and in his land oh why do the nations rage against yah's covenant yet israel will return in the power of yeshua's love in the power of yeshua's love of mercy yotalit of rachami mantle of mercy the compassion of Elohim mantle of mercy yotalit of rachami mantle of mercy the compassion of Elohim. Nachamu, nachamu, ami. Ko amara Elohim. Nachamu, nachamu, ami. Ko amara Elohim. Say it with me in, the, in a loud voice. 
mantle of mercy, your talit of rachami. Mantle of mercy, the compassion of Elohim. Mantle of mercy, your talit of rachami. Compassion of Elohim, Nachamu, Nachamu, Ami. Ko Amara Elohim, Nachamu, Nachamu, Ami. Ko Amara Elohim, Nachamu, Nachamu, Ami. Ko Amara Elohim. Can we have somebody blowing the shofar right now, right? We come before you today, Abba Sheba Shemaim, and we recognize that we're standing in a place that is a portal. It's the portal where Yeshua ascended and will descend. And you chose this portal. However, the enemy has coveted it and therefore has defiled it. And today we come before you to ask your forgiveness. To ask your forgiveness on behalf of that defilement. Because this is your holy land. And your holy land needs to be holy. And needs to be sanctified. And I give you praise right now, Shalom Abba. For restoring the Shalom to this portal. Father God in heaven. We ask you in the name of Yeshua that your blood will now fall like drops of dew and wash and cleanse the portal. The blood of Yeshua to cleanse the portal and to bring salvation to the inhabitants of the Mount of Olives. I give you praise, Lord, that as the blood falls in this portal, there will be many, many that are going to open up their eyes to see that you are the only Savior and all the animosity and the hatred will break because you are a Jewish Messiah. And so the animosity of our neighbors here, it will break. It will finish when they know that it is a Jew that died for them. And I give you praise for even now as I'm talking to move throughout all of them that are here even looking and overlooking what we are doing. And I pray that you will open up their eyes to see that a Jew loves them. A Jew died for them. A Jew died for Ishmael. A Jew died for the Arabs as well. And I pray in the name of Yeshua that your salvation will fall upon them. And that as it falls upon them, instead of having places of foreign worship on the Mount of Olives, calling upon a foreign God, Allah, that it will be a place of holy worship in the Mount of Olives, entreating the return of the Jewish Messiah, breaking through the animosity, breaking through the lies, breaking through the theological lies, breaking through the demonic lies of the fallen angels that have brought them through this portal, demonic lies. Father, in the name of Yeshua, I give you praise and I give you honor and I give you glory. For your Ruach now, during this Shavuot, as we commemorate the giving of the Torah and the giving of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, the fire falling from heaven, we pray that you do it again, that the fire will fall from heaven again, and that there will be many, many, many on the Mount of Olives that will be able to be recipients of the Holy Fire, and they will be able to be there for agents of Shalom, 
not of worldly peace, but of the shalom that you said in Psalms 1, uh, 22, verse 6, when you said, see to it, demand that Jerusalem pray that Jerusalem will be in shalom, will be whole, will be in integrous, will not be divided, will be full of your well-being. And I thank you, Lord, for raising up even prayer warriors from among these very ones that would be our enemies to pray for the shalom of Jerusalem. Father, I know that nothing is impossible for you. And therefore, in this portal, which is the Mount of Olives portal, right here where there is an open heavens, I pray for this to come to pass at the speed of light in the name of Yeshua. For the enemy has a plan to overtake Jerusalem. The enemy has an anti-Messiah plan, but he's had one from the beginning. But you have a bigger plan. And you have a plan like that. Did you even mention it in Isaiah chapter 60? When you said even the camels of Midian will come and the dromedaries of Midian and the people of Kedar will come as well. In other words, there will be many Arab people, Arab nations that are going to come to you in Jerusalem and are going to worship you in Jerusalem and are going to love Israel and honor Israel as your chief sheep nation. I bless you, Abba, that as we're standing on the portal, of the Mount of Olives, the place where the heavens have, the, the heavens have been opened for the descending and the ascending of the very Mashiach, the very Messiah. That you will do this, Abba. That you will bring in a tremendous harvest of Muslims and Arabs to the kingdom that will change the equation in this nation. They will stop believing the lies and coveting the land that has been promised to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And instead of coveting the land that has been promised to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, they will actually live in shalom with us and they will prosper. Because you promised us in Jeremiah 12 that all the evil neighbors that covet the land of that you've given to the people of Israel, that you will destroy them all unless they learn the ways of your people Israel to swear by Yahweh and not by Baal or Allah or anything else. So, Father, you said that unless they repent, they will be utterly destroyed. There is no promise to live one alive. And so we pray today and we cry out today for Rachamim, for mercy, for mercy in such a way that will be a holy revenge for all the terror attacks, for all the blood, for all the lies, for all the political lies, for all the wickedness against Israel, for all the killing and the destruction. We pray for this mercy to come upon them, that they will be seized by your Holy Spirit, by the power of your blood, and that they will become apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers and pastors of the gospel made in Zion and of the Jewish Messiah and of the love of Israel. Father, I know that as I'm praying here in this portal, these prayers have been heard and you're gonna do that exact thing. And we are now going to thank you and praise you for your plan to come to pass in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. I want you to now go into prayer yourself for the shalom of Jerusalem, for the well-being of the city, that it will not be divided, that the projects of building will be blessed, will succeed. Begin to pray right now for the Jewish people that are making aliyah, for the Orthodox Jews that are in the city to actually come, hallelujah, and be blessed in the city, that there will be shalom, there will be a mantle of shalom, hallelujah, upon Jerusalem. Thank you, Lord. I give you praise. Remember Zechariah 12. Remember that it says that the spirit of grace and supplication will fall upon the Jewish people in Jerusalem and we will, uh, we will cry out for him whom we have pierced as for an only son. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. As for an only son. Father, we thank you for the spirit of grace and supplication. We thank you, Abba, that truly the nations have already come against Jerusalem. The new world order already has a plan to take it. It doesn't even have to be through a war. It can be in a political way. But we say no, Father. We say that you said that at the time that all the nations will come against Jerusalem, you will fight for us like 
in the day of battle. You will fight for us and you will judge those nations that have come against us. And Father, you said that at that time when that happens, then there will be a spirit that will fall upon them. The spirit of grace and supplication for the whole city of Jerusalem is your altar. The whole city of Jerusalem is an open portal, is a gate, hallelujah. And I give you praise that the spirit of grace and supplication will fall on Jerusalem first and then in all of Israel. We bless you and we praise you right now. We entreat you for that Ruach, for that spirit of grace and supplication, and for that spirit that fell on Shavuot, on the Jewish disciples of the Temple Mount, to fall upon the Jewish people in Jerusalem. And we say, Lord, do it again. Do it again to prepare for your return so that you can have a whole company of Jews and even Orthodox Jews that are going to be screaming, crying, proclaiming, prophesying, saying and singing Baruch Haba Beshem Adonai 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 Beshem Yeshua Baruch Haba Beshem Adonai Hallelujah Amen.
shall open up for the return of the Messiah. Amen. Amen. In the name of Yeshua, Amen. we declare the opening up of the Mount of Olives portal for the return of Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah on earth. Thank you. Time has changed as of this moment. The contractions will be greater and his return is imminent. Amen. Thank you. Yeshua. Amen. And Amen. I have never, ever done this before here. Never. I've never declared the portal opening up never. for the return of the Messiah. This is a historical Shavuot. I told you that, that this tour was going to be a historical tour. It's going to be like a Yaveh Paratzim, a breaking of the waters, a birthing. I have never, the Holy Spirit, I didn't plan to do this. The Holy Spirit, as we were worshiping him, showed me and he said, open the portal for the return of the Messiah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Father. This is a very holy moment, Lord. And we want to record this moment of the opening of the portal. And Father, we have prayed that the Yeshua, the Messiah, will return with mercy and compassion towards your people Israel and towards the sheep nations that are gathering unto you and unto Israel with blessing and not curses. I bless you, Father, and I praise you for compassion and for a great harvest of sheep nations in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 For you are high and lifted up. Yes, you are high and lifted up. And your glory fills your temple. Let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh so that he will teach us of his ways and that we will walk in his paths. So many times in our nations we have Christian churches, but do they really teach us the ways of Yahweh? I don't think so. But coming here on this Unify mission, joining Unify, taking GRM Bible studies, these are the ways. And by doing Archbishop's tours, these are some of the ways that Yahweh will continue to teach us of his ways. If you enjoyed today's program, support this broadcast by donating to kad-esh.org. To connect with us, write to info at kad-esh.org. We would love to hear from you. Thank you.